in survival genre, you have to admit two games stand out in the terms of history and tradition. First survival game was Daisy, launched on Steam 2013 as a standalone mode, and from its success, many other games followed similar style of gameplay, including free roaming, big maps, zombies, basic needs, and of course, multiplayer PvP. I have experience in both games. We've rust almost 6k hours and Daisy around 4k hours. I played them for many years and still actively returning and making videos about them. I'm not gonna be showing you here comparisons of trailers, but instead step-by-step -step detail analysis of both. I'm introducing a few categories uh, which I consider to be the most important and also why are people returning to them and why they cause so much addiction among players. I'm gonna be talking about vanilla experience only but I will mention few mods as well. We're gonna be talking about the engine, graphics, map, character movement, base building, transport, basic needs, weapons, clothes, enemies, NPCs, crafting, server vibes, overall opinion, player base, and a few things to mention. Enjoy! Daisy runs on a fusion engine and creator of the game is Bohemia Interactive. Rust runs on Unity Engine and creators of Rust is Face Punch Studios located in Birmingham, UK. I'm not gonna tell you all about the tech specs and details, instead I will tell you how does it feel for average player. In terms of first impression, you notice the big graphics difference. Daisy is more darker and colors look more washed out. Its uh, atmosphere is uh, more creepy and sad. Playing game for longer time immerses you to a feeling of being alone in post-apocalyptic world somewhere in the Eastern European land. Almost all the signs on the houses and in the game objects are in Russian language, and with you waking up on the coast, you are trying to figure out what's going on. There is no tutorials, just some tips on the loading screen. For a new player it might be confusing, but that's where the magic is. You're gonna die a lot in the first hours of the game. And if it's not the enemy infected NPCs that will kill you, it will be the hunger, thirst or illness. Yes, uh, Daisy also had uh, warrior's illnesses like cold, food poison, cholera, wound infection if you use dirty bandages for your cuts and also chemical poisoning from gassed out areas. Daisy graphics looks more real in the terms of houses, mountains, forest, player and weapons. Everything is detailed well but interiors of buildings in my opinion need remake as they look very empty and basic plus they repeat a lot. But on the other hand, the spacing between them and the far away distance make you feel really lost and alone if you are on a solo journey. Daisy immersion is full of fear and strong will to survive. Exactly what would you feel in real life? Insta death also adds into atmosphere because one mistake and you see a black screen with you are dead written on it. You have no idea who killed you from where and with what. Simply brutal. Rust is more animated and looks a bit cartoonish, but that quickly fades out. Game has an interesting way of dragging you in and works also on strong human survival instincts, like Daisy, but your adrenaline depends more on what you have in your inventory. Rust has a nice spawning system using sleeping bags and beds, so when you die, you can choose any place on the map where did you place bag or bed before. In Rust, you spawn on the beach and by looking at the map, you quickly can decide where you want to live. Rust has a more biomes than Daisy that are different in what they offer. Where is Daisy mostly a forest, coast or a town in dark winter late November feel, Rust offers forest, desert, snowy, underwater, radiation sea and underground areas. They are also placed uh, more next to each other, so it's easier and faster to move between them. There's lots of monuments that you can visit and they are all different. Some of them offer also puzzle with a keycard that open warriors doors with greater loot. Many players camp those monuments and they will be waiting for you in hidden places to get your loot. Rust has an amazing atmosphere thanks to a lot of biomes and abandoned buildings. It does not have a big town like Daisy. Instead, you are building the big base yourself. Some bases can become really big and look bigger than monuments. It has also few safe zones where you can come to relax, trade, buy or recycle components and change them to precious materials. There is also a currency called scrap, it's something like a money and for a scrap you can buy almost anything in the game. 
weapons, materials, tech stuff, farming stuff or transport. Daisy has currently no currency if you're playing vanilla, but in modded servers there are money, traders and many similar mechanics that Rust is using and been added to the game by fantastic modders. I personally wish sometimes that these things will be implemented in the vanilla experience, but right now uh, you have to find a server that suits your needs. Daisy Vanilla is more about surviving and not business. But if you find the right people on a server, you can make deals with them. Your fantasy has no limits. Comparing both games, you have to decide. You want more fast-paced experience or a long running without seeing nobody for hours sometimes. In Rust, you die more times and faster can recover your stuff. In Daisy, if you die in the middle or end of the map, your body stays on server only 30 minutes and then it's gone. So if you die in TC military base that is a minimum 1 hour running distance, you have no chance to recover your belongings. Talking about the map size, Daisy has many choices, but officially you have Chernarus and Livonia maps. Chernarus is around 225 square kilometers and Livonia around 163. You have another maps that you can enjoy in modded community. To move from one corner to another in Daisy is really far away and it can take hours if you need stops for food and defending yourself. Bases are usually hidden in most random locations so you don't come to see them often. If you have a car it can take up to 25 minutes to move around the map. Maps are fixed and are not changing. You also have some interesting monuments on them like for example Livonia Bunker with high tier loot, airfield, prison island, toxic zones and other army bases. You get also special events like crashed helis across the map which are highly contested by other players and seen and heard on long distances. You also get procedural trains and drops on the airfield where you can find also one of the best loot on the server. Rust has procedurally generated maps so they are all different. It's a great way to always adapt to a new terrain and explore new areas. The same goes for underground metro tunnels and caves which are randomly generated, so a good knowledge of a map can figure out where are they. A high variety of monuments like lighthouses, shops, airport, lawn site, giant excavator used also for mining precious materials, swamps, military bases, missile silo, fishing villages and oil rigs in two variations at the sea. Rust maps are surrounded by the sea from all directions. Where in Daisy or Chernarus you have sea on the south and east coast and in Livonia you have none. Other maps like Deer Island and Namalsk are surrounded by sea. Sadly, swimming is not the strongest point in Daisy. It's really clunky and you can't loot in the water. Lots of players prefer smaller Daisy maps where the whole game is much faster and you don't have to feel like a running simulator. On a massive Daisy maps like Chernarus, it can be frustrating for some new players. Player movements in both games are very different. Rust is more arcade style Counter-Strike, Half-Life type, where Daisy feels more slow with more options. You cannot lay down in Rust on the floor, you can only crouch and that makes no noise at all, so it's easier to kill players from behind. Daisy uses more detailed system of crouching and laying down on the floor, plus rolling and aiming from the ground to all directions. Rust is great in water and definitely beats Daisy in that. Daisy is difficult to swim, it's just simple animation and you don't really use swimming, let's be fair. Only if you wanna go to a Scully Island. One thing I have to admit I really don't like in Daisy, it's ladders. Rust on ladders, it's smooth and you can fall easily, but good thing is that you can loot and heal on them. Daisy is locked in animation and you cannot loot or cannot shoot or heal from it. Also sometimes you can die in the middle of a ladder and stay stuck there in the air and you have no chance to recover your body. In moments like this I am not happy because I lost my loot to a weird game bug and engine that ruins the experience. Same goes for objects in Daisy. sometimes you drop them uh, from a building and they get stuck uh, mid-air on the wall. This happens especially when you are trying to throw barrels down from raid bases so you don't have to wall with them all the way down. Very frustrating. Daisy also has a complex stamina level which is getting smaller with your being wet or more loaded. So more things means you are getting slower and can't sprint that much. In Rust, stamina is infinite and you can run as much as you want in more arcade style. I definitely miss uh, laying down on the floor in Rust. 
it will be a great addition to hide in the tall grass and access secret areas more easily. Perhaps devs can consider this for the future. You can choose arcade-style quake-free shooter versus realistic movement with some clunky moments. Again, they both are unique in their own way, but I would say getting used to Daisy is more difficult and needs more experience to manage. Player interactions with other players are great in both games. You can be communicating via microphone alive in a game, chat or gestures. There is plenty of gestures that you can use, but in Daisy players are more serious about them. Some players don't kill you on the first sight, but using wrong gesture is crucial in those moments. Also, don't point your weapon at somebody while you are making a friendly talk. High risks bring high rewards. You can meet the nicest people. But as like in real life, you never know. Both games offer base building. Raz had base building from beginning since the game started and evolved to an amazing base building system. It's hard to describe how amazing it can be with all the decorations, doors, windows types, skins, traps, walls including skins that you can change colors, electric devices fully functional with electric circuits, switches, various lights, boxes, tool cupboards, furnaces for smelting materials, weapons racks, external walls and gates with protective turrets or flame traps. There is so much that I cannot cover it all. Many games are using Rust style in their games these days because it's really good. Daisy has base building focus more to choose a place where you want to live. Find empty building and build a gate and lock it with 3 or 4 way dial code lock. To obtain materials you need to find them. In Rust you find wood, stone, metal and high quality metal nodes and from them you smelt some of them. Wood and stone can be used to build directly. Metal high quality metal and sulfur need to be smelted in furnaces. Daisy focus more on finding sheet metal wall, cut the trees and obtain wooden locks. Using hammer, hatchet, saw and nails you create planks and from them you can create gates, walls, towers, flags and boxes. You can also find barrels and sea chests to store the loot. Barrels are also great to hold water in them from rain or cook on them and use them as a furnace. You can create really big bases in Daisy, but managing them it's more difficult and slow and I would say more realistic. Where in Rust you can take out of your pocket big amounts of stone and wood and create massive houses very fast, Daisy on the other hand needs step by step adding resources and it can be very slow and frustrating, especially if somebody disturbs you on the way. Also to find all the components for building can be very very difficult and a long process. Base raiding is possible in both games, where you can destroy the doors using explosives or tools. In both games explosives are hard to obtain and you need to watch guides on how to do it properly so you don't waste your precious materials. The daisy walls can be put down by normal bullets or tools, where in Rust you need only explosives like rockets, C4s, exploamo or satchel explosives. I personally managed to put down a wall in Daisy using my fists. I was bleeding a lot, but after almost one hour it was down. In group of more people, tools can be used in Daisy more efficient. I would say both games are very similar in terms of rates. Rust has bigger option of boom and also bases you rate are completely different. Still the feeling when you rate a base in both of the games it's the same. Very very rewarding. Both games have decay time for their buildings. In Daisy, items like barrels and boxes can stay on the ground for weeks or months and the building will decay after a very long time also. You can regulate that with placing a flag post to your base. You need to raise the flag up and keep it there to not despawn your items. If your flag falls down, your base will start to decay slowly. In Rust, you have TC system where you place materials to your tool cupboard and your base literally eats the resources. Bigger base requires more resources. After eating them out, your base will start to decay. If you for example have a metal and wood in your TC and your base will eat all the wood, only the wood will decay. All metal walls will stay. Pretty smart. To decide which base building is better, you need to ask yourself a question. What do you like? Do you like arcade style of base building where you find resources and you craft them straight out of your pocket or you have to find each individual item and slowly create something out of it? 
What do you prefer, realism or arcade fantasy? You decide. I personally believe both games have something unique in their base building. I wish DayZ had more options for base building. For example, dialogue locks are very slow to open, so if you have, let's say, 10 doors in your base, you need at least 4 minutes to get out of it. But DayZ fixed this with their mod community and they are using similar code locks as Rust on modded servers. Both games offers lots of transportation options. In Rust you can go by train, metro, many types of helicopters, attack mini or transport, also snowmobiles, horses, cars, boats, army boats and submarines. Plus you get a scuba gear for underwater adventures. You need to find parts for the carts from crates in boxes next to the road. Each vehicle or helicopter needs low-grade fuel, which you can buy, cook from crude or obtain from animal fat. Vehicles can be repaired with basic materials out of your pocket like metal and hammer. Daisy offers also transport only with cars and it's really difficult to obtain them. In the past there were lots of bugs with cars and they were famous for flying randomly from the map so players get used to walk rather risk their lives in the flying car. But that problem was fixed and with multiple updates game is becoming better and better and this problem did not occur in my recent experience so you can use the cars without fear. Daisy offers also many types of cars. We have three types of city cars, Olga, Gunter and Sarka. Then off-road Ada 4x4, M3S transport vehicle and one army Humvee. Also they have more realistic handling in terms of finding the parts and what do you need for the car. You have to have all four wheels or six wheels for the transport one. You need a radiator for most of them with water in it, battery, spark plug or glow plug, light bulbs and some parts for protection and cosmetics. Plus you can use warrior's tools to repair them. Mode Daisy also offers boats, trains and helicopters. Important thing to mention is that all the cars in Daisy are manual apart from Humvee and you have to shift the gears like in real life. Basic needs in a survival game are a must and I can say straight away Daisy is absolutely amazing in it. It has a big variety of food and styles, how can you cook? You get your water from wells around the map or your fine chlorine tablets to clean the river or pond water. You can hunt deers, bears, wolves, pigs, sheep, cows and many more. You have to be also careful when you catch your animals to not get bloody hands because if you eat with them later you can get food poison. Immersion it's amazing and you really feel hungry when you eat sometimes because you get very connected with the character you play with. Rust basic needs are measured in simple food and water levels bar, so a couple of cans can last you without uh, noticing you need to eat. It will be interesting seeing Rust with the system of food and illnesses. Rust is more PvP competitive and I would say the survival feeling is not as big as in Daisy. But either ways you get adrenaline. In one game from trying to survive and some PvP where Rust is constant PvP adrenaline based. This is the main difference. Weapons in the game are fantastic and there is amazing choice in both. From basic tools and melee weapons to fully automated guns with lots of attachments. Daisy Combat is based also on long distances where you need to aim your gun and calculate more with bullet drop and zeroing the scope. I would say Daisy has very complex system and to manage a high tier gun it's more difficult than in Rust. Both games have a system that is hard to obtain and end game guns. In Rust you need to fight attack helicopters or a battle APC, loot military bases, oil rigs containing military boxes. Where in Daisy you have radiation zones where you need to obtain first a protective hazmat gear and a gas mask to enter. Loot variety is great in both games and you will have a lots of fun obtaining your guns. In Rust you can also buy guns in a rat towns and in Daisy only in modded version of the game from traders. You can also use hand grenades and flashbangs in both games. Weapons attachments like scopes. Night vision goggles, silencers, laser sights and extended magazines are also possible. In Daisy you have to load each magazine by hand combining bullets and empty mags. You need to always be prepared in advance so there is no time to slowly load a mag during a combat. 
Rust has a simple reloading mechanics where you have to certain ammo in your inventory and by pressing R you reload your gun like in arcade shooters. Daisy is interesting also with its jammed weapon mechanics, where if your gun was not repaired and cleaned with cleaning gun kit, there is a high chance it will get stuck and you can lose a precious time and advantage in the fight trying to unstuck the bullet. Very detailed and realistic. Both games offer also great style of clothes, armor and accessories. In Rust you can also buy skins of the clothes and weapons by paying for them with real world money and this creates a fantastic way to be different and expressing yourself. Daisy has also skins on the guns and clothes but only on modded servers. In vanilla experience you have basic clothes which you can damage and repair or cut to rocks. Daisy focuses also on thermometer so you need to get warm to avoid being ill. Clothes have also additional stats like how wet they are, determining your weight and stamina meter. In Rust you have popular hazmat suits, metal and heavy metal armors. You can craft a big variety of clothes which don't affect your weight and stamina. The main focus is on damage and radiation reduction. Simple and fun. In Daisy more geared you are slower you go. So full gear in Daisy with minimal loot and gun is around half stamina and that drains very fast so you have to balance what you want, protection or speed. Daisy system of clothes is more complex than Rust, but that again is in almost all aspects of the game. Make it easy or make it difficult, again your choice. Enemies and NPCs in both games are very different. In Rust you fight with animals like wolves, bears or sharks. For NPC bots you have scientists and tunnelers. They are located on many monuments and can give you really hard time. Their aim is almost perfect and face to face they can kill you very fast. Hardest ones I would say are heavy scientists with M249 and missile silo scientists with massive life and perfect aim. But almost all bots in Rust are difficult when they outnumber you. The way is to go step by step and kill one by one, only then you can succeed. Plus Rust offers boss fights like Attack Choppers or APC Bradley where you need special skills and weapons to face them. Rust offers lots of events like Cargo Ship or Drops where you can challenge yourselves against other players and also NPCs. Very good variety of non-stop fun. Rust offers great PvE options. Daisy has infected that goes to its lore that something happened somewhere in Eastern Europe and all people become infected. Many people think they are zombies but creators of the game call them infected, so they are not dead like in Walking Dead. These types of enemies are really annoying and loud, so when one sees you on distance they aggro at you and start to chase you anywhere you go. It's hard to fight them without weapons and they can cause a big health damage and cuts. When you have a silenced weapons later in the game it becomes much more easier, but you need to aim always for the head. They can absorb around 2-4 shots per body from silencer and that's expensive. You're also facing pack of wolves and bear and believe me, meeting any of them is super dangerous. I would say bear is the worst as if he attack, it can easily one hit you and you're gone. So be ready and listen carefully because you can hear them almost always coming. Both games offering great crafting system but Rust has way more options to craft. Difference between the both is similar like base building. In Rust you need to obtain blueprints of more advanced items like tools, garage doors, weapons, clothes, etc. and then get materials to build them where in Daisy you need to find the things first and combine them together. For example, in Rust you want to build a fireplace. You need 100 wood, get a wood, click craft and you got it in 30 seconds. Place meat inside and cook it. Easy. In Daisy, if you want to make fireplace first, you need to cut down a bush or smaller tree. Then you combine it with rock or paper or bark from the tree. After you combine them both and get fireplace. Then you need uh, matches or lighter or flare to light up the fire. If you don't have any of them, you need to cut some bark down from the tree, one small stick from the bush and combine them to hunt drill kit, which will create a spark and light up the kitling in the fire. If it's windy, your fire won't light up. If you want to cook some meal, you need to cut animal with gloves and knife, cut a long wooden stick, sharpen it with knife and then place meat on the stick. Then you need to sit around 30 seconds next to a fire roasting the meat. 
very complex but very realistic. Both games have vibes of servers happening frequently. In Rust, servers vibe every week depends on the owner and there is once a month global wipe for all servers with monthly updates. Face Punch brings lots of new mechanics and items into the game every month and this creates an infinite path to evolution and changing your tactics. I can say that devs care about the game a lot. Daisy vibes not that often, depends on the work they did but it can be 4 updates per year, so something like every 3 months. They also bring new content, fixes and guns. The only thing about Daisy is funny that some updates come and fix some stuff, but then damage something else. Bohemia has a small team of people working on the game, so they are much slower. I wish personally that more people start to work on Daisy and bring it to the higher places where it belongs. But what devs didn't fix was fixed by modders. Daisy has an amazing modding community and servers all kind where you can find exactly what you want. New weapons, traders, maps like Livonia, Namalsk or Deer Island, hardcore mods, helicopters, boats, upgraded base building and many others. Usually they have active admins and cheating there is non-existent. Important thing to mention is that when you log out in Rust, your body stays in the place you logged out with all the items on you. So usually you do it in your own house to stay safe. You can also see who killed you and with what weapon. You can even connect game to a Rust Plus app on your phone where it will show you if you've been killed, raided or you can even watch with camera on your phone what's happening outside of your base. This system is not perfect yet but it works and you can see basic information. In days you log out and your body stays on the server for a few seconds, preventing combat logout. Many times I chased a guy and he hid in a house and then when I entered he was gone, like a ghost teleported to another realm. So it can be annoying, but luckily on many community servers this is not allowed and if you present an evidence of combat logout on video, player will be banned. You can log into a server anytime back with your gear. Sometimes I don't play a month and upon logging I'm back in the same place with the same gear. Your character deleted after game updates so usually it's not forever. We arrive to a final stage of the video where we'll discuss the most important things. Cheating in the game is pretty bad in uh, both and you can meet cheater almost in every session you play. From my personal experience didn't meet any cheater on daisy community servers but on official servers when the server was full almost always I died to a cheater. They can shoot you easily through the walls or see you. After update 1.23 in daisy I did not felt any more magic bullet what is a famous daisy cheat that can kill you on 1 km distance through all objects. It feels that something was done but I highly suggest play only on community servers in daisy official is more for messing around. In Rust I met and caught few cheaters in my 6 years in the game and it was always very obvious they are cheating. Rust has a very good reporting system and if something like that happened usually they get caught. There is still plenty of cheaters in the game but they are not that often. Especially on servers with live admins, cheaters are caught almost immediately upon reporting. I really wish both games will fix this issue completely, especially Daisy. Official servers can be so much fun, but are ruined by these scams. So your question was, what's better, Daisy or Rust? I would say I love them both in their own special way. Daisy has advantage over Rust in more darker, hostile atmosphere with insta-kill creating massive fear of losing your life and gear and that adds a lot of adrenaline into your bloodstream. Daisy has amazing weapons, basic needs, illnesses and clothing system that will keep you busy with just pure survival. Also people playing Daisy are more mature and older and you can have a nicer interactions and conversations. Rust is a hardcore PvP based game with minimum survival aspects but it's really fast paced and the engine is fantastic. The fights can create epic moments and the adrenaline rush is really amazing. Cold sweaty palms are usually in rust and you need a little breaks from shakes here and there. Crafting, bases, events and overall the whole game feelings are fantastic. Blueprint system is great to learn a new stuff and you have to rely on purely finding items. Rust is popular for all ages, kids and adults and its global chat system makes it really fun and toxic experience.
you can meet all kind of people there, but yes, Rust is famous for screaming kids, it's a part of it definitely. I never met a screaming kid in Daisy, let's be honest. I'm pretty sure I did not cover all the differences, but it will be a great if you mention them in the comments. I try to look at the both games from perspective of experienced player who knows something about them. I'm making videos and shorts about both games and your support means the world to me. Please subscribe for more Daisy and Rust content. Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.